I am excited to be making this video today because it is on my all-time most played hero, and that is Beastmaster, and we're taking him mid. All right. Here we go, let's go ahead and talk strategy, understand conceptually how he works, and then we'll we'll go into, into some of the finer details. So first if you like this type of content, go to gamersclass.com for just $9.99 a month, watch master classes with pro players, join exclusive live sessions, and get 24-7 access to coaches and other high MMR players. Get full control of your rank games and start owning with our Supreme Dota 2 membership. First of all, Beastmaster has changed. Necro Book has been removed. The new way to play Beastmaster is maxing Wild Axes. Why would we max Wild Axes first? Well, first off, we're gonna play him mid, so we're farming quick. Uh, we're gonna get a bottle on Beastmaster. Sometimes you can get this Soul Ring. Uh, the amount of runes available within the four first four minutes is nutty. You get the Water Rune, and then you get the Bounty, and then you get the Water Rune, and that's at uh two three and then four minutes so you've got a lot of farm that you or a lot of bounty ruins and a lot of uh mana that you can regen with your bottle and health as well second because they buffed axes so that's that's nice they reduce the mana cost on it they uh and, and they, they just uh they buffed it with the scepter and that's going to be the main part of this build so this is actually something that i was trying in the last patch it was my my, my favorite way of playing beastmaster and they made it better what you do is you go agnum scepter first so you're going to go bottle and then you're going to go agnums you're going to farm as fast as you can until you can get the agnum scepter and at level six there might be a situation where you make a play around the map however most of the time you're just going to be non-stop farming until you get the eggs and when you get the axe agnum scepter you go and you wreak havoc around the map so getting your Agnum Scepter quickly means that you have to farm fast and what you're gonna do is use your axes to farm quickly what Beastmaster should be doing here I don't know if this one's gonna do it uh, he's not he should be going to this camp and using his axes to farm this camp and this camp simultaneously you can farm two camps at the same time Ah, he's doing it over here instead because he has stacks nice Radiant so this is exactly what you want to do as Beastmaster to increase your farm as fast as possible now axes increase damage amplification per stack and you're gonna also well uh, level up your call of the wild boar so you have your boars attacking at the same time Another thing you want to do to increase your farm and get a fast Agnum Scepter timing is use your boars to stack when you're not farming the lane uh, or when you're not using them for, for something effective. Now you can see over here he's going to go make a play, but that's not important. We don't care what he does here. We're just talking about how to farm quickly with the Agnums. You're going to jump in between the jungle and the mid lane. You're going to continuously push out the mid lane as fast as you can and then go back into the jungle. So you'll go this jungle, mid lane, this jungle back down to mid lane and do that over and over again until you have your Agnum Scepter. This Beastmaster that we're watching just got his Agnum Scepter at around the uh, 14 and a half minute mark. He has died twice, but you know, you can get it around 12 minutes. Also, sometimes you can skip Soul Ring. Uh, you can get Soul Ring if you want. I prefer usually not to get it, but it, it is really good on Beastmaster if you're running low on mana. And now look at how fast he farms. Look at this. Damage amplification per axe, and what his Agnums does is allow him to continuously throw axes without cooldown. You just have to wait until they return to you. So that means that you can push out waves and farm camps incredibly quickly. It also gives you 30 bonus damage on the axes, which is awesome. So two axes usually clears a whole creep wave. Uh, and you can just walk around the map, push waves, and be an absolute menace, especially when your Primal Roar is up. Now you can see the build that he's going for is a little bit interesting. So what he's going to do is get an Aether Lens. It's going to give him longer range axes, and it's going to let him uh, uh, get a longer range Primal Roar. Uh, Beastmaster's talents are a little nutty, actually. While we watch him farm around, I'm going to talk quickly about his talents. So you're going to take the movement speed talent almost every time. At level 15, you want the three mana regeneration, and at level 20, he's got this absolute absolutely broken broken minus 35 second primal roar cooldown that gives you a at level at when it's the 70 second cooldown that gives you a 35 second cooldown on a bkb piercing four second stun it's nuts every 35 seconds you can go around looking for a kill it's really really strong 
and with the the octarine core that he's choosing to go that's that's pretty cool too now i prefer usually not to go octarine core at this point i like to go actually for a blink dagger um and then i like to go into boots of travel but you know what you can play around with a lot of different builds then afterwards you can go into pretty much whatever you want as long as you get the agnums and then like start making plays around the map you're pretty set but uh, i'll give you some good ideas akaya and assange are really strong a uh because kai akaya is just ridiculously good it does uh uh, damage amplification and mana loss reduction so he has less mana issues and then the blink dagger is something that you really really want to look at getting and you can see that he can just set up kills everywhere once he gets it so let's see how he plays forward from this point the sequence we're about to watch now is axe Max Beastmaster in a team fight. So you see he starts his fight with a nice roar, gets some axes off, and watch how he just plays this fight. He's just chilling in the distance. He's standing back here, his teammates are fighting, and all he has to do is throw as many axes as possible, hoping to get stacks of the damage amplification per axe that hits. Now, how the damage amplification works is really cool because it doesn't just increase the amplified damage. It doesn't just amplify the damage of your axes it also amplifies the damage of all other damage that the hero takes so uh physical damage from your enemies other spells that enemies cast and yes your axes as well that actually makes him really good at taking roshan we'll talk about that in a minute but look at this our buddy our buddy uh our, our buddy the beastmaster is just alive through a chronosphere sitting back still in the background continuously throwing axes he's got the three mana regen talent he's enjoying himself the life stealer dies he's gonna try to get out of here silence and boom turned by the legion and now still sitting in the distance keeping himself safe while also doing tons of damage they managed to completely turn around this team fight and it's really hard to chase beastmaster because his boars have a lot of slow in in uh in their auto attacks the slow is 40 percent. that's quite a bit of slow so if you're chasing someone and or if you're running away as beastmaster use your boars to attack the person that's chasing you and let your hero run away they'll slow down by 40 percent. and a lot of the times you'll be able to escape now as if there wasn't enough ridiculous stuff in dota we're gonna see something pretty ridiculous how quickly beastmaster and a team can take down roshan so actually, Beastmaster can still take down Roshan by himself with the smoke. The only difference is, compared to when they patched it to now, is that the smoke will not allow, or will will not keep Roshan in a single place when he gets hit with the axes. So anyway, uh, let's quickly talk about how fast that Rosh was. Uh, each stack of axes amplifies the damage and he just sits there right clicks Roshan as fast as possible gets his stacks of axes in and pretty much With his team is able to take it down in like less than 10 seconds. So that's that's pretty awesome What I'm going to talk about now really quickly is how to take it with a smoke uh, If you find a regen ruin and you have a smoke you can easily go take Roshan what you do You have your regen ruin or an arcane ruin also works um, you, What you do is you smoke into the Rosh pit um, and you just start throwing your axes on Roshan each each damage or each axe that you hit him with will amplify damage and then the only reason this is a little bit less good than when they patched it is because Roshan will start running around like an idiot. He'll run out of the pit, and if the enemy team sees it or has wards, they'll know that you're Roshing. But still, most of the time you can get away with it. You can sneak the Rosh as Beastmaster, especially if you're lower in MMR. Prepare yourself to see the kill combo on Beastmaster and just how effective this is. So. Look at his items. He's got the blink dagger and he's got the eggs. This is what you need to pretty much kill any hero. So watch him start. Starts with wild axes from the trees, blinks forward, roars. Now he has one stack on. And once his axes get back, he's going to continue throwing them down, getting multiple stacks. Now look how much damage this Mars has already taken. Three stacks of axes and the Mars dies to the level 18 Beastmaster just like that. So... I mean, that, that that should tell you something. And and it's not like the Mars was gonna be able to get away there. Even if he had to, even if he had the opportunity to start running away or try to throw down an arena, Beastmaster still would have got multiple stat, multiple additional axes thrown. And with the Aether Lens and the Blink Dagger, he probably, like he was getting that kill. That kill was his for sure, unless somebody saved, showed up to save the Mars. That is the play, that is the power of Beastmaster. And you see how strong these axes are for solo killing as well.
now we're seeing the strongest power spike for Beastmaster in the game. It is actually, well, maybe not 100% the strongest, but an incredibly strong. 25 is also really, really strong. But this is the point in the game where he's an absolute threat all the time. When he has a blink dagger, when he has boots of travel, and when he has this mini minus 35 second primal roar cooldown, he only has to wait 35 seconds between roars for a four second BKB piercing stun. Um, it's it's just so it's so so strong. So if you have uh, if you have the level if you have your level 20 talent, that's the point in the game where you should be looking to combo and kill with whoever you can. Push objectives, take towers, use your axes to farm every camp that's available, and make yourself just an absolute threat on the map. Try to get to 25, and at 25, you get yourself your 4% wild axes damage amplification per stack, an additional 4%, which brings you up to 16% stacked damage. It's so strong. To finish the video off, we're going to talk about the super late game items that you can buy as Beastmaster. So you can see here that this Beastmaster has the Blink Dagger, the Scythe, the Boots of Travel, the Agnum Scepter, and the Aether Lens. Now, other items that are really nice to pick up, I do really like the Scythe device, but other items that are really nice to pick up are a Kaya and Sanj. Um, Kaya and Sanj is really strong, I had mentioned that before. The spell amplification is 16% and that's just crazy with your axes. And then you can also pick up a Arcane Blink. Uh, Arcane Blink is going to reduce your cast point for after your blink, which means you have a really quick blink roar and then a bunch of really quick uh, axe throws. So Arcane Blink is really nice. The Aether Lens can upgrade into an Octarine form, which reduces your cooldowns, giving you more, more frequent roars. And then a lot of the time, you will need a BKB. You, you will want to get a BKB. Um, this game, the Beastmaster is not going for it, but there are a lot of games where BKB will probably be the item you want to go. Other options are um, to upgrade the Agnums. Upgrade the Agnums and give yourself some more magic damage items, like um, maybe a Shiva's Guard or... Um, I don't know. I, I, I would probably throw a Shiva's Guard in there. But your primary ones, those are your primary ones. Uh, upgrading this to an Arcane Blink, getting an Octarine Core, and getting a Kaya and Sanj as well, and then Boots of Travel level 2. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about yet is the Agnum Shard. Uh, I'll quickly say that this is a good shard. It gives your Hawk the ability to dive bomb and the uh, 15 second lower cooldown. So you have vision around the map a lot more readily available. And that's pretty much the mid beastmaster if you can uh if you can if you can farm quickly with him and get an agnum scepter at a reasonable time you should be able to just continuously farm camps get yourself around the map and get yourself pretty easy wins with this hero